Hello everybody, this is part one of a two-part LEGO custom review on a mock I built based on Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. Before I begin this video, I'd like to say that I don't claim to be a professional LEGO builder, but I do claim to love building prototype sets that I would love to be officially made by LEGO. I'm also hoping that some people can see these prototypes and be inspired to exercise their creativity. In fact, this set was actually inspired by a picture I saw on Google Images, which will be linked in the comments below. But I also wanted to try some new techniques and make my own version. So anyway, on to the build. So this is what I call Secrets of the Sith or Exegol Expl Exploration, based off of the scene when the Sith Wayfinder leads Kylo Ren to Exegol and he discovers the truth about his path to the dark side. It would include four minifigures and three, uh, technically four, different features. To start off, let's take a look at this platform. By pushing the Technic beams, you can raise the platform or you can lower it by pulling it. It's pretty simple but effective. Just place your minifigure on, most likely Kylo Ren with his Sith Waybinder, and then you hold the top so that it can slide pretty smoothly. It's got a bit of a wobbly axle because it's such a long piece, like one of the longest Technic beams I've ever seen in LEGO, but it's really nice to give that long range of motion. It's um, pretty effective. If I would say one thing about it, it is not long enough to get all the way to the top, but um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Next, let's take a look at this brick-built Sith monolith. This was a really tricky build, especially considering that I wanted to make it look like a hooded, cloaked figure. Um, I think the thing that was most difficult was actually the hood itself and not getting that nice round shape. It's a little gappy on the back, but from the front, it looks pretty menacing, pretty effective. This head is actually a slope piece to kind of give the illusion of the hood kind of going over it, giving it that nice shadow. Um, the base is just a, a simple little brick-built platform held together by tiles. And then you have this side jumper piece to hold up the monolith itself. Altogether, it looks like a pretty menacing standing statue. This lightsaber was also kind of fun because even though it uses the illegal uh, Lego building technique of clipping two clips together, it does give a pretty unique staff slash lightsaber impression. Moving on, we come to the main focus of this build and this is the Snoke clone tank. Now since I don't have very many clear pieces, I really wanted to challenge myself to build this. So using some windshield and cockpit cover pieces from the old Lego Batman sets, I attempted to replicate that in this model. Um, it was a pretty difficult build for two reasons. One, I actually built this from top to bottom, making it a really fragile build. Like you can see there, it's like barely holding on. It's held together by some bricks inside. But Maybe I can just gently pull it up and give you an idea. So it's held together by the windshields. There we go. And so there's like literally no bottom. But there are some gaps in here because I wanted to add, just kind of as a funny little Easter egg, some of the golem pieces to represent like pickled Snokes. Although I wanted the main Snoke figure to be the focus. But yeah, it, you can tell that it's really fragile. It's got some hinged pieces so that if I wanted to get these figures out, I can open them up. Maybe that's how um, the Sith the Eternal pulls Snoke out, with just kind of like a vending machine, you know? But anyway, it was also pretty hard to build because the main foundation of this is actually a minifigure display piece which is kind of hard to build with because, as you know, three studs. So it was kind of tricky to try to even it out so that one, it could look centered, and two, it could be held up. So 
I and there's just a few little details like this uh, control panel and some of those um, other switches but um, you also have like some vials and this kind of gives it the impression of like blood being siphoned into it or siphoned out um, I don't know. just kind of a fun little detail and then red and green studs this is actually kind of funny because this is actually a minifigure stud shooter but I just placed it on upside down on a stud and then just gave it some dark red studs to again give that impression of machinery for this tank and not much else to that and then right here we just have a weird little turbine thing because I noticed that there were some kind of round devices there was even the oscillator from Snoke's uh, ship but it's just movable you can move it wherever you want you want it in the background you can put it in the background you want it over here over there just allowing some more creativity and then there's the final part and then finally you have the Amin harness again for those of you who have like seen my previous videos you've seen this kind of build before but I actually upgraded it because originally this was more technic based so it had more of like the features like the elevator in this set but um, this time I went with a more brick uh, based ball and joint function so it can be adjusted so that you can have a bit more of like a accurate look in a stop motion so you can switch it around also you can take off this piece and if you wanted to make an official stop motion you can try to make it look more like the movie by having this huge arm actually descending from the top but of course that's an optional thing you have some little details like wiring and blue light blue casings represent the liquids that are going into him using some of the pin stud pieces you can escalate these to give more of a injection kind of look and then when you get here you have some more cables and wires that are just to add to that detailed look I changed the color of this to a bright blue because that's a bit more accurate and then I also added some of these syringe pieces just to kind of again give that idea that you know he's weak he needs medical assistance and it's the same Palpatine minifigure the only difference I did though was I decided to make him have a light gray hand because if he's weak and stuff he wouldn't look that um, together so I th think that it was a pretty good idea I also added a different feature for this harness. This build is also removable from the other set using some Technic pins here, but now the additional feature I added was this little handle. It's adjustable so that you can hide it if using a stop motion or something, but it is a little better to move rather than if you were to just do this, because then it's, you know, it's very shaky and wobbly. But grab this handle, and it works pretty well. Oh yeah, and another little detail that I nearly forgot to mention was this little drill piece with the blue, dare I say it, blue milk <laughs> to kind of help the Emperor rejuvenate. So all you gotta do is take the Emperor, slide him over and readjust his harness so that it can either slide in from the back through use of those grill pieces or you know you can have it more to the side there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do it but um it's up to you and your imagination also i personally love lego sets that connect to create bigger sets like Lord of the Rings, Helm's Deep, and Yurikai Army. So these Technic compatible bricks can be used to connect the other half of this mock, Destiny of a Jedi. 
This not only completes the look, but also allows the Amun Harness to have the range it needs to place Palpatine in the Sith throne room, which I will show in the next video. Continuing on, the minifigures that I would include in the set would be Kylo Ren, two Sith Loyalists, and Palpatine in his weakened state. So, when I looked up reference for the Sith Loyalists, or Sith Cultists, though I think Loyalist is a better term in this case, I managed to replicate it in Lego form with a mummy head and a 1999 Darth Vader body with a simple robotic plate chest printing. That I think is the more ideal look, though the Ringwraith, Ringwraith prints from The Lord of the Rings also works pretty well. And again, Palpatine has this little neck plate so that he can attach to his harness. Just take the neck plate, line it up with this one in the back, and there you go. And that is the end of part one. What do you guys think of this build? Would you want a Lego set like this released? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, I hope that this build inspires you to get your brick on. Be sure to check out part two when it comes out. Happy building, and may the force be with you.